Ooh. Hey fellas, welcome back to part three and the final episode in the F-16 build in this exciting episode. I, uh, I get it finished. I get it, get it all finished. Uh, if I don't break it. So here it is. There we go. We'll get a closer look at it at the end of the video. Uh, I am putting this one for sale on eBay. So I will, once I get my eBay listing up, I uh, will put it in the description, the, a link to it. I start all my planes off at a dollar. So <clears throat> I'm not trying to get rich. I just let, you know, whoever wants to buy it, pay, it goes for what it goes for. So I'm uh, not real concerned about how much I make on it. <clears throat> anyway, in this exciting episode, I get, uh, I show you how I, I, I use decals and how I put decals down. And, and these are to me decals, but they didn't actually, they weren't real bad. I mean, they're not the greatest ever, <laughs> but, uh, you know, not as bad as I remember. And I hadn't put, you know, a lot of, a whole set of to me decals down in a while, but I'll show you how I do that. And then, uh, sh show you how I, uh, how I do my some panel line washes and then a little bit of oil paint stuff and and then I finish it up so uh, I'll quit jabbing and uh, let's get on with the video all right fellas we're gonna decal and uh, to me decals aren't my favorite and I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm not the best decaler in the world uh, so <laughs> take take from this what you will um, but I've got some setting solutions here. My main one that I like to use is Microsol. Uh, they have micro set, but this is something you're supposed to put on before you put the decal on. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think it does anything. At least in my experience, it doesn't. Um, I've got Solva set, which is typically what I use after, after the decals are down and they've dried and I need to get them settled down. Um, I've also got Mark Fit Strong and Mark Fit regular decal setting solution. I, I'm not a big fan of this. I don't, um, I hardly ever use it. Um, I do have a clear coat on my plane, which, uh, if you know, there, you don't have to have a clear coat, but in my opinion, the decals tend to stick a little bit better to the model with a clear coat. As far as silvering goes, you get silvering when, when the surface is rough, and, and there are little air, air pockets that form underneath the decal, which is co what causes the silvering. So um, whether or not it's clear or you got a clear coat on it or a, a flat coat that's nice and smooth, uh, it doesn't really matter as far as silvering goes, in, in my opinion. So, but I just like the way that, that the, the decals stick better to this um, shiny, shiny clear coat that I put on. So I've got my warm water in a little dish and then I've got a coffee warmer to keep my water warm. Uh, before I start, I always like to cut out all my decals and get them somewhat organized. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is on each of the decals, there's a little number. And what happens is, is when you wet this, this little number like splits off and gets everywhere and gets on your model. So what I, what I like to do before I actually lay the decal on is just cut off that stupid little number that I'm not gonna need. That way I don't have to mess with it floating around and getting on the model and just causing a hassle. Now, as far as all my equipment for decaling, I have brushes set aside just for decaling. These don't get any paint on them. They're just for decaling. So I've got this little brush here and then this one. Um, this is the set of tweezers that I use. It's got a nice pointy, pointy end. Uh, I've got some um, Q-tips or cotton buds. And what I like to do with this Microsol is just go ahead and instead of spilling it, I'll put a little bit in the cap and then I will set this aside so I do not spill it because I've spilled that many times. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one that's gonna be easy to locate. So I've got this little number right here and it's going to be pretty easy to locate on top of her i can pick this up okay i'm just going to dip it in the water now some decals it may take a little bit longer especially with older decals you may have to soak them a little bit longer but with um with these this, this should be good okay and then you can check to see if if it uh if it moves off the paper, so there we go. Uh, 
it's already separating from the backing paper. So I'm gonna let that sit on there for just a minute. I'm gonna take my brush. Now in the, what I like to do, especially with Camia decals, is I will take my Microsol and I will put it on here. Now you may not be able to do this with, uh, with your specific decal because Microsol can really wreak havoc on a, on a decal, especially if you haven't got it set up yet. So with smaller decals like this, I'll just lift it off the backing paper and set it on here. Get it aligned. I'll take a Q-tip. Oh, man. And I'll wet it. You don't want to do this with a dry Q-tip. And I'm just going to roll it. Just like so. And just like that okay and now next I'm gonna do the 5af because I can locate that pretty easily so I'll do the same thing all right so I know that this is gonna get be somewhat centered all right, so I'll take my. Now, if you don't use Microsaw and use the method that I'm using, like putting it on here first, what I would recommend, at least put water down. Now, on one of these bigger decals, what I'm going to do is instead of ripping it off like I did the other one, I'm going to wet my fingers. I'm going to slide it on there. Because if I try to pull this one off like I did the smaller one, what's going to happen is it's going to curl up and make a mess and ruin my decal. All right, so I'm just trying to judge where this is at. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and I'll take a wet cotton bud and I'm gonna gently start in the middle and try to push that, all the liquid out from underneath it. Just like so. Now I do have a panel line there, so what I'm probably gonna have to do um, once this is, is set up and, and stuck down there and dried somewhat, I'll come in with an X-Acto knife and make a slice right along that panel line and then hit it with some Solvacet. Okay, now we're gonna do the WW. Now, if I need to move this decal, what I can do, uh, it doesn't work with all decals, but um, you're just gonna have to work with it and experiment. But I can soak this in water and you know get it all wet again and then try to move it. Uh, sometimes you get it set down and it's stuck and you're not moving it until you rip it off. So it's kind of have to, just depends on the decal and the quality of decal that you got, okay? So again, I'm gonna dip my finger here all right let's see where this goes that 
actually looks pretty good. You know, a lot of times I'll get the decal down, it'll look good, and then when I step back and take a look at it, it's like crooked or something. <laughs> All right. Take a wet Q-tip, start in the middle, and gently start pushing that liquid out from underneath. I already tell I'm probably going to have an air bubble or two in this one. But it is what it is. Now you can, all this carrier film that's around it, you can actually cut that out. And sometimes I do. I'm just not wasting my time with it. We'll deal with it. So it looks like... Right here I have an air bubble, air bubble or a foreign type object. Oh boy. Oh, that stinks. So we'll have to deal with that, but there we go. Now, what I, what I do is I'll come back with with my micro saw and I'm going to put micro saw on these decals just like so now if you got a thin decal or a really high quality decal, what's going to happen now is the, the decal is going to shrivel up and it's supposed to do that. Um, but it will go back down and be straight as it dries. And these are somewhat doing that right now. It may be kind of hard to pick up on video, but they are starting to uh, crinkle up. And what you want to do is just kind of leave it and see what it does it should settle down if not then you'll just have to go back and make some slices with an exacto blade and and just work with it and we'll probably have to do that a little bit um before we're done here so uh, when i have some issues with these and i know i'm going to have some issues we'll come back and, and try to try to take care of it and i'll show you how i do that mm. Mm. Ah, all right there's a, a mid video sip Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. Uh, decals went down okay. The, I had to fight with them a little bit. There was some silvering that I noticed, and to get them down on the panel lines, I had to slice slice the decals and uh, basically just take an X-Acto blade and make little slits where I saw some silvering, and then I hit them with some Solvacet. Did a couple rounds of that, and overall, they're not too bad. They're still a little thick, and you can see where they kind of stand proud. But uh, they are what they are. Overall, you know, I think it looks okay. Uh, then I hit it with a clear coat, and what I use for that is Pledge Floor Care, which is otherwise known as Future. They might have a different name now, I'm not sure. But um, it's an acrylic clear coat. You could use X22 or whatever clear coat I, you want, I guess. But um, just, to, just to make sure the, uh, to cover the decals and protect them for the next step. And the next step is doing panel line wash. Okay, now there are several different things you can use, and, and sometimes I, I change it up. You could use oil paints, uh, and keep in mind, this is an acrylic finish, so I can put uh, something that I can, uh, you know, I can put mineral spirits on it. It's not going to harm the acrylic finish. A lot of people still get confused with that, a lot of new guys, and I did too when I started. You know, I wasn't sure. I, <laughs> you know, I had this in my mind. I, I, there's no way I could put mineral spirits on a on a paint job, it's gonna rip the paint off. Well, it's not gonna rip the paint off of an acrylic finish. Now, if you put something like uh, lacquer thinner, if you put that on there, yes, that's gonna rip up your paint. <laughs> so don't, don't do that. Uh, so what I like to use is either oil paints or, I've got these and I tried these, but this stuff is so hard to get off. Uh, you, you, 
you really have to, to work at getting this stuff off and, and uh, use some mineral spirits to, to rub it off. It's just really hard to get off. Uh, I've also got this Ammo MIG panel line wash and, and all these colors from Ammo MIG. I think this is a, yeah, these are panel line washes. Uh, I really like those. They're really easy to remove. And I'll show you here. I've got some on here and I've left this to dry for about a half an hour. Okay, so all you have to do to wipe this off, I have a just a regular paper towel. I don't have any minerals, mineral spirits on it. And it comes off just like so, so easy. I really like this stuff. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to get to stick in the panel lines when I'm spitting on the model. But there we go, that's all there is to that stuff. Now, what I'm doing, <clears throat> what I like to do uh, on, on a lot of my planes is I'll get several different colors. Now, you see some people that will, and I've done this before a lot of times too, is just take one color, like a black panel line wash, and do every panel line in black. And that's fine if that's what kind of look you're going for. But a lot of times I like to vary it, so I'll use different colors. Now, up here, I have some lighter colors. So I've got this real light gray panel line wash, and we'll just demonstrate here. And you can change this too. Like if I put this down and I, and I don't like it, I can come back and, and add a, a different color over top of it, or vice versa. So I've got this light gray. And this stuff's kind of thick because I haven't used it in a while. And let's see, let's pick out, say, this panel line right here. And I just think alter, um, uh, putting different washes in the different panels just gives it a little bit more interest and a little bit more realism, in my opinion. But again, you can just do all black or all gray or, you know, whatever, whatever you want. It's your model. You do what you want with it. Uh, I just think this looks kind of cool. And then I've got some black. You can use, like I can do some, um, some panels black. And keep in mind, after I do this, I'm going to put a flat coat on it and I'm probably going to do some more like oil paint work and stuff and I can I can adjust you know if I don't like something I can change it at that point as well say I want to do this one in black okay there we go and what what I plan on doing is I've got this Stone gray for black. It's almost like a dirty tan. And I'm going to do most of the panel lines in this, at least on the, the darker color. Um, so I'm going to do most of it in this color. And it's like just like a dirty. So what this is going to do, it's going to be, it's going to give it a subtle contrast between the panel lines. So it'll just make them a little bit more prominent, but it's not going to be overwhelming. And this is the stuff that I had just wiped off of these panels. And it may be hard to tell on the video, but it's just a different shade. Got just a little bit of a brown tone. And I, I, I like this color for these, for these darker, these darker grays. And I've got some pictures that I have saved on my phone that I'm going to kind of reference and try to replicate some of the some of the panels and such. So this is like, uh, I think these are enamels, but they, they, they can be wiped away with, or thinned down with mineral spirits. So these aren't gonna harm, harm this acrylic paint or the acrylic clear coat. You can also put this directly over top of the Tamiya acrylic. Um, my recommendation is if you're not sure if the paint's going to interact with whatever washer you're using, do it on like, um, you know, an inconspicuous spot first and test it out to make sure that uh, everything's going to be copacetic. Otherwise, um, you know, I've, I've just done this enough that I, I know it's not going to hurt it. So that's basically all there is to it. And for... 
the lighter gray, I'm going to use this um, blue dirt. And I've already done some of this on the nose. And some of my panel lines are somewhat kind of filled in. So uh, it's, it's um, I'm going to have to work at it. And if, if they don't get all, if they don't get uh, all panel line wash, that's okay. Is what it is. So the, yeah, this stuff's like a darker gray. And instead of using a black on this lighter color, this darker gray really does, um, I think, is a nice medium in-between color to bring out some of the panel lines here in this lighter gray. Like see, see. So it's not a real drastic, dramatic difference. It's just enough to bring out that detail without being in your face. This darker gray, it's almost like a blue, what do they call it? Did I just say, yeah, it's called blue dirt. It's blue dirt. Okay. This other stuff should be dry enough. Uh, maybe not. Uh, let's see. I will. This is dry right here. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll wipe it off and then you can get a good look at at what those the difference in the panel line washes and kind of what uh, what look I'm trying to achieve here. All right, fellas, so what I'm doing now is I'm playing with some oil paints, and uh, I went ahead and put a flat coat on it, F XF86 by Tamiya. It's my favorite flat coat for doing oil work. And the reason I do a flat coat is because it gives the uh, the oil paint something to grab onto. If I, It helps me blend it a little bit better than if I used a, just a regular gloss coat. So what I'm doing now is I've got some pictures pulled up here of some different F16s. You can see here on the iPad and what I'm going to start out doing is trying to I can get this to trying to replicate some of this darker staining right along here I don't know if it's because it's wet on the actual plane or what but I'm just going to try I'm going to try to replicate that so what I've, I'm using I'm only going to use like three different colors of oil paints I'm not going to go all out I've got a faded white some smoke which is like a bluish tinted black and then uh, sepia for some like dirt areas along where they would climb into the into the jet. So I've mixed some smoke and some uh, faded white, and I've come up with this darker gray, and I've got it diluted with uh, my odorless mineral spirits. So it's almost like a really thick wash. And what I'm doing is I'm going around, and I'm just taking this and coming around and just painting it in there and you can see it's pretty thin and i'm just painting it in the areas that i want to darken let's see here and it's okay if it doesn't look right to be to start off with because i'm going to blend it in a little bit with a q-tip or cotton bud as my English friends would say. So I'm just putting it in here where I want the color. And you can tell it's just a little bit darker than the paint that I've got down. The birds are chirping. All right. 
that'll be good enough for demonstration purposes. Now I've already done some over here and while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the sepia color right along the bottom here. Now it doesn't take a whole lot. So I'm just going to take a little bit of mineral spirits and I'm going to make just a, a little bit of a, a wash. It doesn't take much. And the good thing about uh, this oil paint is if you don't like it, you can always come back and erase it with some mineral spirits. Okay. Get this out of the way before I spill it. So I'm going to come along here along the bottom of the canopy. And I'm just going to add a little bit of this wash. And again, we can blend this just a faint, I just want a faint impression of it, of some dirt. Okay, now this area that I've already worked on over here, I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm just going to start, in fact, I can actually take a dry brush with nothing on it. And we can start with this and just sort of blend this out <clears throat> with the brush. like so and that's not doing good enough then I can just take a q-tip and I can come in here and lightly with a dry q-tip just kind of soften those edges of, of my oil paint and slowly remove a little bit because I just want the faint appearance of this staining or this a darker looking, whether it's water or some kind of liquid. And I'm going to have to play with this a while, so I mean, I'm, I may not get it right the first time, but I can come in here and wipe it away, clear off my canvas if I need to, and I can add a little bit more if I need to. And, all right, so I may add a little bit more around here. Now I don't wanna go really overboard on this because, um, in my experience, this weathering type stuff can get really out of hand, but if you add just a few touches here and there, it really adds a little bit more interest to the model. But again, if you go overboard and do too much, I, in my opinion, it, it just tends to, it can detract from it really quick. Okay. And I may play with this just a little bit more, but you get the idea of what I'm going for there. All right. I'll let this dry a little bit more. <clears throat> and I'm, again, like I said, I'm going to play with this. Now, the stuff that we put down here to make it look a little dirty, we'll, we'll uh, let's get my, my brush here. And we're gonna try to blend this in. So I'm just taking my brush and blending that in. I just want a little bit of dirt. And I think that looks pretty good. Just 
blend that paint in. All right. I think I might be happy with that. And a lot of this is, <clears throat> a, a lot of times I'll, I'll do a little bit, I'll set it aside and I'll come back and look at it later and decide, eh, maybe I like it, maybe I don't. So it's one of those things you just gotta kind of work with. It takes a little bit. And uh, you know, it is, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, as long as you're happy with it, cool. But sometimes it just takes a little bit of uh, just setting it aside and coming back and looking at it later with fresh set of eyes uh, to, uh, to to get it to where you want it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll probably be doing some of these other areas. I'm I'm taking you know just some some ideas from different planes. I'm not trying to replicate any just any one plane. I'm just getting some ideas just to add a little bit more interest to the model. All right, fellas. Look at this. We got it done. Got it done. I got it done last night. Uh, I came up with the idea of the base from some images online. I wanted something other than just a plain American flag, but I did want the flag underneath it. And I, I came across this like tattered looking, um, you know, divided up flag, cracked flag. And I thought, you know, that'd be cool. When I, once I painted it, I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. But, uh, you know, after I see it this morning, it's it grew on me. I think I think I'll stick with it because I wasn't quite sure whether or not I would or not. But uh, there we go. And there is the the plane. The bottom of it. No. <laughs> if you're anything like me, uh, by the time I get to the bottom of a plane, it's towards the end of the build, and I'm just kind of like, you know, usually tired of messing with it. I just want to be done with it. So like the bottom of my planes are hardly ever weathered that much. I mean, I, I got a little bit of streaking on here and some real subtle stuff, but I just get sick of messing with it by, by the time I get to the bottom weathering. So uh, unless I start my weathering process on the bottom, most of my planes aren't weathered that much on the bottom. So there we go. Pretty happy with it overall. Not the easiest kit to build in the world. Not, I mean, it's a good kit. It's just, uh, there are a few little few little issues but uh nothing major i mean it's a good kit and it, i think it was only like 40 or 50 bucks so not bad for for a nice kit like this and then all the the bombs and missiles come off with my magnets and uh, after this video i will take it off here and then package it up and it will be posted on my ebay page for sale so there we go fellas thanks for watching Here's some pics.